All right, good afternoon, morning, whatever it is while you're watching this, band parents and band students. For those of you who I have not had the opportunity to meet, my name is Austin Jasmore, band director for Pittsburgh High School. Today, I'm going to go through what would normally be a band parent meeting down in the band hall, <clears throat> but for obvious reasons, we can't do that this year. So everything that I would have covered in that parent meeting is now going to be covered through this video and the accompanying slideshow that we'll get to in just a second. As always, if you have any questions about anything on this video, please do not hesitate to call. Do not hesitate to ask questions. You all know just as well as I do. More often than not, just because it works up here doesn't mean it always works here. So if I don't communicate something clearly or you would like clarification on something, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. So with that said, let's get started. So welcome to this year's band parent and student meeting as well. So let's get to it. First of all, I wanna talk a little bit about COVID preparedness. Hopefully you've already had a chance to watch our YouTube video. If you can't, there is the link that you can type in. You're not gonna be able to search for that video on YouTube. You're gonna to have to follow that link directly. Also, we've posted it through Remind and on our band Facebook page. You can access it there. But here's the short of it. Each student will need a mask every single day. There will be a daily self-check administered through uh, Remind and Google Forms. Every single day, your student's temperature is going to be taken. If they have a temperature of above 100.4, they will not be allowed in a rehearsal. They will be sent home. <coughs> there will be a six-foot distance between students when masks are off, 10-foot distance when we are outside with masks off, daily sanitizing of student areas, and no, shoe, no shared food or water sources. And for those who don't have a water jug, we'll provide water. I'll get to that more in just a minute. So... Oops. Band student expectations. Let's talk about what it is to be in the high school band. This is specifically for freshman parents. However, it's a good thing to remember and to be reminded that most things will not change this year as far as expectations are concerned. First of all, all band students are going to be responsible for Monday night rehearsals. That's new to freshmen. Every Monday night between 6.30 to 9 p.m., we have a Monday night rehearsal. That's every Monday that we're in school leading up to a contest starting September 7th and going to UIL or the Texas State Military Marching Band Contest. That also starts January 11th, not January 18th, because that's Martin Luther King holiday, and then we're resuming on January 25th, going all the way to March 29th. Uh, it's a good thing to also know and realize that I think on March 22nd, that's the week before the 29th, we will have a dress rehearsal for a UIL concert and sight reading assessment. So put that in your calendars. Sectionals, every student is gonna be responsible throughout the year for over various, uh, over various topics, a sectional or a lesson. Their lesson is gonna be a 15 minute one-on-one -on -one lesson with a band director, depending on what instrument they play. That's gonna be dependent upon how they participate in all region or solo ensemble. If they choose not to participate in all region, then they're gonna, have, they're gonna have a sectional. That sectional is gonna go over the same music because we use that music for our spring band placement. But it's done in a large group setting. Those lessons are 15 minutes. They can be done before or after school or sometimes during lunch if we can have lunch open. At this point, I don't know if the high school band will be able to or not. Or their sectional will be 30 minutes. The reason the sectional is longer is because that's a large group of people, whereas the lesson is 15 minutes long. That's once a week for every student. That is graded, that is requirement. Uh, the, the reason we do that, not so that they audition for all region, but because we use that, that music as they prepare for all region for our spring band placement. So every student needs to work on that music. And we'll talk about that spring band placement later. Their performances, our performances, we have several throughout the year. Snap competition, uh, all, the short of it is, is that we will have a snap competition, although it's not going to be open to the public. We're not allowed to have a gathering of more than 50 people uh, without county permission from the county judge and, and, and our mayor of Pittsburgh. So because of that, we are going to have a snap competition open to students only. It will be recorded, potentially live streamed, uh, but we'll, we'll figure that out at a later date. But that is going to actually be Monday, August 17th, I believe. That's going to be different than what I originally gave you. Uh, the student leadership decided that uh, they wanted a little bit more time, but also it would be, it would kind of get everybody into the idea of coming up on a Monday night. So uh, more information will come out that about that soon. Tailgate has been canceled, so we're not performing that this year. So if you haven't heard, tailgate's been canceled. Uh, of course, our Friday night football games. Uh, right now, we are planning on being at every football game. However, uh, the question has been, uh, has been brought up by both me, Mr. Hill, Mr. Waldrop, Mr. Shelton, and Ms. Smith. 
as to whether or not we can safely transport the band to away games. That question is still being discussed. At this moment, I don't have an answer for you. Understand that Mr. Hill and I are going to be meeting in this upcoming week, uh, the first week of August. We're going to discuss that. Our number one priority is the safety of our students. No matter what, I want to do things in a safe manner. If it can't be done safely, then we're not going to do it. Uh, however, we're going to take a look and assess that to see how we can do it. Home games, of course, we will be there because we don't have to travel via bus. Concerts. Unless something else happens that says that we can't have these concerts, our concerts are planned. Christmas concert, spaghetti supper concert, and our spring concert. Again, unless something happens that we can't do that, then we will plan on having those concerts and parades. As of right now, the Pioneer Day Parade has been canceled. Uh, it's not going to happen in September. In December, the Christmas parade is still up in the air. We don't know yet. So if that happens, we're responsible for that parade. If it doesn't happen, then we're not. Uh, band students need to be responsible for their instrument and their uniform. Those uniforms, uh, going backwards on this list, uniforms are very expensive. They're about $500 a piece. They need to be responsible and care for, the students need to be responsible and care for those uniforms. Uh, and also those instruments. Those instruments are also very expensive, much more than $500 in many cases. If it's a school-owned instrument, uh, there is a maintenance agreement that is in the band handbook that is available through email or online. Uh, or if it's a personal instrument, those things are expensive. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, one other thing that students need to be responsible for is communication. One of the number one ways that I communicate with students directly is through Remind. And that is, you can send a text message to Remind. You send it to 81010, and the message is at 21 Thunder. Now, the band parent Remind is a little bit different. I don't use it as often. However, um, however I do use it to regularly give information to the parents. So that message is, that, that is as you see below, at, uh, send a message to 81010, and then the band remind is at 21 B N D P R N T as the message. So you send those messages to those numbers, and that's what you will, uh, that's how you can be on the band parent remind. I also use charms regularly, we'll be talking about that in a little bit. So important dates. On the back of the handbook and available online are some important dates. They do not include Monday night rehearsals, sectionals, football games, the Christmas parade, which is potentially December 20th, uh, the potential playoff games, November 13th and 20th, band booster meeting dates, which are the first Tuesday of each month, and you see them listed there, September 1st, uh, October 6th, November 10th. Normally we do it on the 3rd, but this year being election year, uh, we're not going to do it on the 3rd. January 12th of 2021, also again, not the first Tuesday, but we're not in school on that day. February 2nd, March 2nd, April 6th, and then the May date is to be determined. And although this isn't a trip year, there are many volunteer opportunities. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. But those dates that are on the back of the band handbook and also in our student leader handbook do not include any of those dates. Uh, so please keep that in mind that all the rest of our dates that are on those are important. Please uh, keep those in your calendar. Speaking of volunteer opportunities, uh, there are opportunities to earn points for your student to help defray the costs of trips in the future. Our home football games, August 28th, September 4th, December 9th, I'm sorry, October 9th, October 16th, and October 30th. You can sign up to work the concession stand. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You can get points towards your students. It is a lot of work and it is kind of warm, but uh, you get some pretty good points to help your students go on these trips for relatively inexpensively. Um, I did not update those spaghetti supper dates, so please forgive me for that. Those dates are incorrect. I believe the spaghetti supper is on uh, is on Tuesday, February 25th. Uh, yes, that's Tuesday, February 25th, with the cooking uh, to be done Sunday, February 21st. So this February 23rd should be the 21st for the cooking. And February 25th should actually be the 23rd. That's my fault. I apologize about that. Uh, fall and spring Coke sales. Fall Coke sales will begin in September with pickup on Thursday, October 1st. Uh, spring Coke sales date yet to be determined. If you would like to volunteer, if, or if you would like to volunteer for this or other opportunities, such as bus, bus riding to away games, assuming we go to away games, please email Lisa Ibarra. Her email is tierzyxavier at live.com to volunteer. Again, almost everything that you volunteer for, you will get points towards your students' trips in the future. So one thing that all high school band students, we ask that you turn in, is a 24-pack of bottled water and a 12-pack of sodas. We ask that uh, by August 7th. We use those at our various contests, our various football games, uh, 
several times throughout the year will feed the students. We ask that you that each student provide those. Uh, if you don't want to go to the store and get them yourself, you can pay the band $10 and we'll buy them for you. All right, uniform items. Every band student will need some uniform items. The shirt and shorts have not changed this year. So sophomore, junior, seniors, if you cannot, or if you already have them, uh, you don't need to order them. Shoes, make sure you have yours. We are going to order all of these on August 7th. The shoes are $40, the shirt and shorts are $15 and $16 respectively, making the total uh, 30, I'm sorry, $71. Uh, again, we're ordering those on August 7th, so if you haven't turned in your order, please do so now. This is what the band shirt looks like. It hasn't changed. Uh, it's got the front pit band that thunder across the land, and then the pride of Pittsburgh and pride standing for personal responsibility and delivering excellence. So, uh, charms. Let's talk about charms very briefly. Uh, if Charms is a very powerful tool that the band staff uses, uh, and we encourage all, all band parents to know how it works and know uh, all the different steps that you can do, but here's just a couple of things about it. First of all, uh, you can go to charmsoffice.com. The school code is Pittsburgh HSB, like high school band. Uh, you can download the app through your app store, Charms Blue Parent Student Portal, uh, and it'll ask for a school code when you're logging in. Now, your, your password the default password for your student is their school ID number. However, most students have been able to log into Charms and have their own password. If you do not, if you try to log into Charms and it says the password's already there and, it, and you can't remember the password, then email me and I will be able to reset that password for you. Uh, just a few of the things that we use Charms for. First of all, is a calendar. All the dates that we use throughout the year are put on a Charms calendar. Uh, we also use it for finances, for especially students who use uh, regularly supplies from the band, greens, et cetera. You can see what, if anything, that your student owes. And then also communication. Now this is probably the biggest thing that as a parent you will be able to make use of is that when anything, anytime we need anything or need parents to know anything, we send an email through Charms. Uh, and if your contact information is in there, then you'll get that email. If it's not, obviously you don't get the email. So please, please, please make sure that you can log into Charms and you have your, your profile set up for your students so that I can communicate with you through email because usually speaking, that's the most effective way for us to communicate. Uh, I know all of your students do a fantastic job about communicating everything that we tell them at school to you. So this is just another extra layer there. Um, and so if you would please make sure that that is, that is part of the way that we can communicate with you. I do want to do a little bit of shameless recruiting for our ensembles class. This is an applied music class. It's open to any student in the high school band. Uh, it meets third period. It focuses on music instruction in a small group setting, smaller than band. Um, it increases your chance of region band placement, higher chance of making it to state solo and ensemble. We typically do music theory and music history uh, during that class. One, we, we generally have a rotation, one year's theory, one year's history. Uh, the biggest advantage to the ensembles class is if you sign up for ensembles class, you have no after school section until March, until we start getting ready for uh, concert and sight reading assessment. Because what would be your 15 minute after school lesson on either all region music or solo ensemble music happens during third period ensembles class. So uh, just to kind of give an idea of the past three years, we've had um, all state band students. And every single year, one of the all state band students were in our ensembles class. Last year was two of our five all state band students. They were in the ensembles class. So there's a, there's a pretty strong correlation there. So I encourage your students, if they really, really want to become a better musician, really want to push their individual musicianship, that's how to do it is to the ensembles class. Let's talk a little bit about band grades. Band grades are different at the high school, significantly different at the high school compared to at the junior high. Uh, the first one is that you have four or five grades per week. At the junior high is generally one grade per week, but at the high school band it's four or five grades generally per week. The first grade is a weekly participation grade. If you show up to class and you have all, all of your uh, all of your stuff that you need, it's basically a free 100. You're in class, you have your stuff, it's free 100. Our Monday night rehearsals are also grades. Those are test grades. They're required. You're required to be there. Uh, Monday night rehearsal grades, two and a half hours of rehearsal. That's our biggest chunk of rehearsal time each week. Your weekly section or lesson time, that's a daily grade. Uh, you show up, it's a 100. You don't show up or, and you don't make up the time, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it's a zero. Uh, weekly pass-offs. Each week you're going to have a pass-off. There's going to be a chunk of music that you must pass off to either a student leader or to a band staff member. Uh, that is also a grade. If you don't do it, it's a zero. And lastly, your performances. Obviously, Friday night football games 
uh, UIL marching contest, any other contest that we have, those are grades as well. Part of the things that Texas requires us to teach is performance band, is a performance-based class. So we grade uh, because of it. So let's go, uh, I mentioned earlier spring band placement. In the spring, uh, something that's new at the high school, uh, new for the junior high students coming up in the high school, is we have two performing ensembles. That's not new. We've been doing that for about seven or eight years now, but this is new to eighth graders coming up to be freshmen. Uh, we have the symphonic band, which is essentially our varsity level ensemble. They play harder music. They meet first period. Uh, they usually start at, or they start at 7.30 in the morning uh, once we get into the spring and go until 7.30 until UIL concert site reading assessment. Excuse me. Our concert band, which is our junior varsity level, meets second period. Uh, they still meet um, Monday nights, just like the symphonic band does, but obviously we can't have them meet before school because they meet second period. Uh, the music is just a little bit easier, a little bit more uh, suited to the level of the ensemble, uh, but we still take them to anything and everything that the symphonic band does, the concert band does as well, including UIL concert and sight reading assessment, spaghetti supper, spring concert, all region solo ensemble, etc. So anything that the symphonic band does, the concert band does as well. Keep that in mind. This is this is split based on ability level, and it is audition based. That all region music that I talked about earlier uh, is a portion of their uh, of how they are placed. Uh, the region music you get 300 total points on our rubric for how you perform your region music. The stuff that they go over in lessons and sectionals, and they've been doing since September, usually sometimes even August. Uh, that's 300 points. Attendance and punctuality are also 100 points. Attitude is 100 points. Academic eligibility uh, is 100 points. Pass-offs is 100 points. Instrument care only comes into play if there has been an issue. So for the most part, instrument care does not, uh, does not, is not taken into account. However, if a student is habitually abusing instruments, then yes, it could potentially affect spring band placement. Uh, so you see that there's a total of seven categories, uh, two pieces of region music and 100 points each. One uh, set of region scales, which are 100 points, and then uh, those other four categories, excluding instrument care, are 100 points each. And from there, it is a just raw ranking. The top, um, and I'll just use flutes for example, the top six flutes, highest scoring flutes, will be placed in the symphonic band, and the remainder will go into the concert band, and so on and so forth. Uh, and those numbers, they, they, they shift just a little bit each year, but this is basically how we get um, how we get students placed for their spring band placement. So uh, continuing on, attendance policy. Attendance policy is very simple. Just be here if you can, be here if you can. Uh, you have excused absences and unexcused absences, and here's what delineates between the two. Uh, excused absences are any excused absence for school, a family emergency, a doctor's note, an extracurricular competition that can't be accommodated. So let's say, for example, you're in basketball and you have a basketball game. That's an excused absence or a recognized religious or holy day. Uh, and, and one thing as stated to me by Mr. Hill, those are recognized specifically religious or holy days. Uh, one thing he did tell us a couple of years ago is that Wednesday nights, although we don't do anything on Wednesday nights, Wednesday nights are not specifically a holy day, it's church night, I understand. Uh, and we don't do anything on Sundays either. We don't do anything past about five o'clock on Wednesday anyway. Uh, however, recognized religious or holy days are exactly that, recognized religious or holy days. Um, unexcused absences. I'm going to talk about that in just a second, and work. So work is not an excused absence. Uh, we give our, our weekly schedule and our yearly schedule so that students who do work, and, and, and trust me, I understand. I worked my entire junior and senior year of high school. I understand completely students have to work, um, especially in this day and age. We give you these schedules and give you these uh, calendars so that students can work with their jobs. And for the most part, most employers around Camp County understand that students involved in extracurricular activities are going to be there. So let's talk about, uh, oh, let me go back. Um, let's talk about those un unexcused absences. Anything that does not fall under this category of excused absences is an unexcused absence. Um, and unexcused absence has a different set of rules and, and policies on how we handle that. We'll go over that in just a little bit. But let's talk about extracurricular activities and absences for just a second. So let's say your student is involved in more than band, which I encourage students, uh, you know, band is not everything for students. Uh, for some people, band is everything, but I don't expect that to be that way for everybody. So extracurricular absences are school-related organizations. Uh, leagues and groups and organizations that are not directly school-related don't fall under extracurricular absences. That's not my policy, that's district policy. Uh, students are still responsible for the grade. 
<clears throat> if a student misses math class because they're on, for example, a student council trip, and that math class has a test that day, that student is not exempt from that test grade. <clears throat> It is equally applicable in band class. If a student misses their sectional because they're on an extracurricular activity, that's fine. However, they're still responsible for the grade for that sectional. So the student is gonna be responsible for making up those extracurricular absences. And those can be made up before school, after school, or during lunch. And accommodations may be made with the band staff, but they have to communicate beforehand. Uh, generally speaking, um, we like that to be done within two weeks. We had an issue last year where a student missed in February and waited a long time to make it up and it became an issue. Now there is a new section in the band handbook having to do with makeup time. Um, this, was, this part of the new section is because of that issue is that the student did the, uh, student did the makeup time but did not turn in the, the makeup time sheet. So we can't give you credit. If you do not turn in that makeup time sheet, you cannot get credit for it. So please keep that in mind. There's a form, it's outside the band hall office. You fill it out, you turn it in, you get a band director to initial it, and that's how you get credit. This year we're actually making those a duplicate. So when you turn in one, you keep a, a half of it and then the band staff keeps half of it. So that way, if there ever is a question later on, you have your copy and the band staff has a copy just in case. All right, let's talk about tardiness. Uh, tardiness, now for students who ride the bus, the 7.30, the 7.30 time to start class for us at the high school, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you have an exemption. Now you're expected to get off the bus and then come straight down to the band hall. We'll talk about breakfast here in just a second. Everyone else, you're expected to be on time. We start at 7.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And uh, we also expect you to be on time for rehearsals during the school day. So let's talk, you know, for the concert band in the spring. Um, if class starts at 946 and you walk in the door at 947, you're tardy. That's district policy, not mine. So again, 7.30 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. For those who are late, there will be a physical exercise generally running. Sometimes that may change. On Tuesdays, we start at set, We will start at 7.55 rehearsal. The reason for that is, is because on Tuesdays is generally when extracurricular activities have their meetings. That allows students to be able to go to those extracurricular meetings and, and not be tardy for band. Uh, and again, the extracurricular students who meet in the morning, we want to give them the opportunity to do that. Um, so that's why we meet at 755 on Tuesdays. And then um, PHS tardy policy is in effect for that 755 meeting. Um, and then one other thing is to be on time for all rehearsals that happen outside of school day. Uh, physical exercise for tardiness. So uh, rehearsals and performances. So like for example on a Friday if there's a 530 call time be there by 530. Uh, if not, there'll be a physical exercise involved with that. Contact information for the band staff. If you have any questions on any of this, um, there's my email at jessmore.pittsburghisd.net. You can call the high school. My extension is 2501. Miss Kathy has been moved from the seventh grade up to the high school assistant. So hers is okathy at pittsburghisd.net with uh, her extension being 2504. Uh, Mr. Forner, our uh, eighth grade director, you can call him uh, at the junior high at extension 3200, his email dhorner at pittsburghisd.net. And then Mr. Maynard, who was our new seventh grade director, uh, same extension as Mr. Forner, his email is j, uh, j maynard at pittsburghisd.net. Couple other things real quick to cover before we uh, end this video is first of all, student marching health. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna need students is a proper pair of shoes. No boots, flats, toms, vans, crocs, etc. Those are not good for you. You need to have proper arch support. If not, you're gonna get shin splints. Those hurt. If you're using uh, shoes that do not have arch support, you're gonna hurt yourself. Just don't do it. Use a good pair of tennis shoes, uh, and you're gonna march through those shoes this entire year. You'll probably go through a, a pair of tennis shoes. So uh, get a good set of tennis shoes that have not been really worn down to give you proper arch support. Second thing is hydration. Uh, water or Powerade, Gatorade, do not drink sodas, energy drinks, coffee uh, as your hydration. Now, I mean, you're talking to the world's you know, biggest coffee addict over here every morning and have a cup of coffee on my way into work. You need to make sure that if you do have a cup of coffee, you also have water, Powerade, Gatorade, et cetera. <clears throat> Part of uh, your marching health as well is to have good food. Eat a good breakfast. A bag of Pop-Tarts is not a good breakfast. That's carbohydrates. You're gonna burn through that energy in about an hour. You need protein on top of that. So have some eggs, don't eat just cereal. Uh, have some uh, fruit in addition to 
uh, like a protein bar. You need both protein for long term energy, carbs for short term energy to get your body going in the morning. Okay. You can't just have carbs, it will not last you the entire three hour outdoor marching rehearsal. Another thing is sunscreen is a must, uh, especially if you are blessed like me with Irish complexion. Uh, you need sunscreen. Sunscreen, it, it seems unnecessary, but in 20 or 30 years, you'll, you'll be thanking me for it. Sunscreen is a must. We're going to be outside from 8 until 11 a.m. every single day for the next uh, two weeks. Sunscreen is a must. And then recognize the signs of heat illness, be it dizziness, urine color, chills, exhaustion, confusion, headache. One of the first things to, to know that as you start getting dehydrated is your urine color. Uh, it needs to be as clear as it can. If, there, if the water changes color when you use the restroom, you're dehydrated. Uh, the second one to come is headache. If you start getting a headache, it's because you're dehydrated. It's not because you need Tylenol, it's because you're getting dehydrated. And then comes the dizziness, chills, exhaustion, and confusion when you start getting into severe uh, heat exhaustion or even heat stroke. So um, please make sure that you drink plenty of fluids. Please make sure that you eat a good breakfast, uh, not just carbohydrates, and that'll help keep you healthy. Remember that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Buy a water jug. Now the band is providing water jugs this year. The, the water jugs have been ordered thanks very much to approval from Mr. Waldrop. We've ordered a, band, a water jug, a half gallon water jug for every single student in the band. They're not gonna be here until Wednesday or Thursday, I think this week. So I encourage if you have a water jug, use it for the first few days. If you don't, you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a water jug right now, uh, but you can if you want to. Eat a good breakfast. Don't eat just Pop-Tarts or cereal or donuts. You need something besides just carbohydrates. Uh, and then as we're outside, don't keep going in and back and forth, inside, outside, inside, outside, between the AC and the heat. Uh, wear some sunblock. Uh, wear some sunblock. Ha hat, have some sunglasses. That'll keep the sun out of your face. <clears throat> Excuse me, keep the sun out of your face. And then I put on there, buy a water jug again. You don't have to. Again, we have some coming in. Now, for the students who don't have a water jug, uh, the band is going to provide you a bottle of waters. Thanks to the band boosters, they bought a whole bunch of uh, water from Brookshire's this past weekend. So the band will provide you some. There will be some ice. There will be, it's actually going to be enough for every student to have three bottles of water every day until those water jugs come in. <clears throat> and once those water jugs come in, we do ask that you bring them to the school with you every day. Fill them with ice, fill them with water before you leave. A half gallon should be plenty to make it through the three hours that we have. And then lastly, if you have a camelback, that's okay. If you have one of those hydration flasks, uh, that's, that's okay. We encourage it. That way you have it right there. You don't have to go to the sideline for your water jug. So I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you taking the time out to get this information. And I know it's a lot of information. Again, if you have any questions whatsoever, any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to call. Please do not hesitate to, please do not hesitate to ask those questions. I really want to make sure this year we've got a lot of uphill climbing to do because of things that are outside our control. So I really want to make sure that this year goes well and is smooth, but most importantly is safe. No matter what we do this year, if we do it unsafely, it's not worth it. We absolutely have to keep everybody safe. And on top of the normal stressors of making sure that we're safe outside with students, we also have COVID to worry about as well. Not necessarily for everybody in the band, which is true, but also for those at home, those at home that may have medical conditions that would make getting COVID very difficult, if not deadly for them. So we're going to do number, number one priority this year. Everything that we do is going to be done through the lens of how do we do it safely. And then we will worry about everything else. And if that means that all we do is play school song, fight song, and a couple of twirler tunes, so be it. If that's all that we can do safely. Now, I believe with the steps that we've been taken, as been told by Ms. Uh, Mr. Waldrop, Mr. Hill, and Ms. Smith, we can do much more than that. We can have a great and fantastic year. But our number one priority is safety. So, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. Give me a call. I'll be more than happy to help uh, you know, alleviate those fears or at least put steps in place to make sure that those fears do not come to fruition. Thank you very much again. And if y'all have any questions, give me a call. Thanks. Bye-bye.